I can see the Waterberg mountain range directly in front of me and um, I'm on my way to Marakele National Park which is located in the Limpopo province in South Africa it's about a three hour drive north from Johannesburg not a bad drive it's been pretty easy going I've never been there before I've never been to Marakele so I'm going in blind I didn't want to do too much research because I want to figure this place out with you all uh, we'll do it together I'm staying three nights in a safari tent at Klopi camp it's a big five reserve so I've got lion leopard uh, rhino elephant buffalo and of course plenty of antelope and uh, a good good diverse range of, of bird life etc it's kind of in a transitional zone between the drier areas to the west and the moister areas to the to the east uh, much like Pilansburg so there might be a little bit of a familiar feeling about it um, yeah I guess I guess this is me introducing myself to to Marikele and who knows maybe there'll be a, a connection there this national park is divided into kind of like two sections uh, one big five area so that includes the more dangerous animals and a non big five area and it looks like it looks like Klopi camp is in the big five area so that's a bonus uh, do you have a firearm? no do you have a drone? no and no pets? no? no pets no pets no I thought you said no pants okay <laughs> okay <laughs> thank you very much it would have been weird if you actually really did say no pants Oh well, yes, I'm wearing that. I think this is entering Big Five country. My first impression here is that in terms of the just the scenery it's just beautifully rugged so we got this red soil uh, very rocky rugged terrain and these massive mountains just surrounding you kind of just overlooking the the mixed bush felt here with it feels like wisdom <laughs> it's very cool the fact that it's also at least 35 degrees at the moment um, just kind of adds to that yeah, it's toasty it's toasty Oh my goodness, the view looks insane already. I'll give you a little tour later on. Oh, sh While settling in with a cup of coffee, I had my first unexpected encounter. monkey scared the crap out of me he's gonna be back he's gone to tell all his friends that there's a naive tourist in town and they're gonna be back for more tried to intimidate it he ended up intimidating me and that was that so uh, we'll let it cool down a little bit and head out and see what's happening out there
been a while since I've seen a rhino with its full beautiful horn intact. Um, little one beside it as well just to, to put the cherry on top. That was quite special. Just don't people, just don't. Enjoy yourselves but just take your rubbish with you. I was beginning to think that sightings would be quite difficult to come by here and um, just a few minutes later Marikele was like hold my beer <laughs> it's been an incredible afternoon um, so much so that I need to kind of just make sure I get back to camp in time but as the Sun is is getting lower the shadows are getting longer the mountains are or well, the shade in the the mountains are getting bluer or purpley I'm not even sure what color it's it's just incredible um, yeah I, I love this place already Apart from the the monkey wanting the banana more than me, <laughs> it's been a great day. I hadn't seen a single mammal uh, from the main gate to the camp, which is about 17 and a half kilometers. And I was like, hmm, okay, maybe it's just because it's really hot. But it just felt like, it felt very barren to begin with. And I thought, okay, sightings here are just not going to be as prolific as places like Pilansburg and Kruger, etc. After about five minutes of sitting still and in the silence for a while, I realized actually there is a ton going on here. Just in one little spot there was buffalo tracks, rhino, uh, rhino midden, traces or signs of elephants feeding um, very recently. And I thought, okay, actually it's not about what's happening around me. Maybe it's what's happening within me and it's I need to kind of put myself on that same frequency, wavelength of, of what's happening out here to actually start realizing and, and noticing what's happening around me. Yeah, true as nuts. Like 10 minutes later, a lovely white rhino cow with a calf. A little bit further down the road, another herd of elephants. A little bit further from them, another herd of elephants. I don't know, I just felt like the place really came alive. Maybe a little bit of a safari life lesson. As the, the sun sets here, there's something about the, the mountains that just kind of screams at you. It's like, hey, I'm watching you. I mentioned that I was going to just introduce myself to, to Marikele National Park today. And uh, maybe there'll be a connection. And all I can say is there's a spark. There's a spark. We'll, we'll see where it goes.
wattled lapwings just on the other side of the river there. We're going nuts the whole night. Was woken up by a hyena whooping from the other side there as well. Just that. But much louder. There goes the moon somewhere there. Not the worst view to wake up to. Well, we've started the day on a promising note. We have some fresh lion tracks just on the on the road here. Looks like they lay down over there. As long as they stay on the road, it's good news for us. Will we get lucky? Either way, I'm excited. This is what I love about the mornings. The roads are a blank canvas. It's kind of like an artist came in overnight and kind of painted a picture for you. And you've just got to now interpret it and try to solve a little bit of a puzzle while just appreciating the art of a lion track. So this is a, just a good chance to quickly show you what I'm actually looking at. Here is a lion track. First of all, this is quite a small one. You can see it compared to my hand, it's actually a bit smaller than my hand. And uh, that'll be from a youngster. We've got three lobes at the back. One, two, three, which indicates that this is definitely a cat. The reason I'm not confusing this with leopard, uh, I, I don't think there'd be like seven or eight leopards walking down the road here. Yeah. Chances are pretty slim. Uh, lions, I don't know if you can see here, it's almost like a little bit asymmetrical where it hangs down on the one side, but a leopards would be very symmetrical and round. So yeah, that's what we're looking at. They went down that way and we'll have a look in the area later today. felt it was time to check out the popular Lenong viewpoint. The scenery on the way up is just stunning. I'm on my way to a viewpoint. I've just stopped here at the little restroom. I was walking through here. Something quite special happened. We have a couple of rhinos just through there and they are not bothered at all their eyesight's not great at all their hearing and sense of smell is all right <laughs> more than all right but if i stay in the shade here they won't even recognize that there's a shape in the shade if that makes sense <laughs> This road's very narrow and it's a pretty steep drop off so you've got to kind of pay attention here and not film while you're driving. Marakele and the Kranzberg mountain range are home to one of the largest breeding colonies of Cape vultures in the world, as well as the rare and endemic Kranzberg widow butterfly. My first thought was, I have to find this butterfly, but unfortunately they'll only be flying from November for a few weeks. It was great to see things from a different perspective. The view from up here shows just how dry the land really is at this time of year. But things will start changing soon with the first real rainfall slowly approaching with summer.
So I'm recording this on my phone because I'm taking a time lapse of that. It's pretty crazy. I think it might be from a massive fire or something south of us. Yeah, it just kind of came out of nowhere. And that maybe just makes things interesting. I think it might be time to head out for a, a drive because now the light is good. It's cooled down because it's blocking the sun. Let's go. That is honestly quite easily a top 10 sunset for me. <laughs> so, so special. I don't want the day to end. It's just, it's getting better and better, but I have to get back to camp. By this point, Marikele was leaving a serious impression on me. Whew, what a day. What a day. This morning started off with excitement with the lion tracks and um, it just didn't quite work out in the end. It's just nice to know that they, they're close by. I think they're literally like a few k's that way, somewhere in that vicinity. White rhinos, beautiful elephant sightings, buffalo, all the big stuff and it kind of suits it well, it suits the, the scenery well. This morning I went up to the Lenong viewpoint, which is that way, and Jeez, it just gets even more beautiful. I can see what the hype is about. Um, the route up and down is just incredible. You can see the place has been burnt sometime over the last few months and there's just this short green grass coming through. It feels like you're in another country. It's just amazing. It was cooking today. The weather app says 33, but uh, real, real fuel was like 40. And I actually planned on just sitting here for the afternoon and seeing what comes down to the dam and maybe capturing some footage of the fish eagle that's been hanging around. So, I mean I was just looking around and I was like wow the light just got amazing and the whole atmosphere just changed. It was exciting. It was just like straight away get ready go for a drive. Uh, did not get lucky with the lions but got maybe even luckier with that incredible sunset. And there's a point on the hills just here across from the dam and where you look back this way down at the camp you can see the dam in front of us and the sun was setting perfectly in line with it and it looked like the sun through the through the smoky clouds or whatever was reflecting just in that little pot of gold on the black ground i think that's why it makes it into the top 10 it's just a very unique one beautifully apocalyptic is how i would put it I learned a few things while i was up there at the lenong viewpoint today which helped me understand the park a little bit better and there's actually a number of of rock paintings around here at old iron age sites that i don't think are open to the public but but um i wonder i wonder if you can you can see that kind of stuff if you if you get hold of an archaeologist or something i'd love to do that because apparently these this rock art shows that big mammals and big herds of them have been roaming these areas for a long time and of course at some point like in many areas in in South Africa they got hunted out and kind of pushed out by humans but in the 90s when this place was proclaimed a protected park 
they started introducing or reintroducing things like elephants, buffalo, rhino, even things like zebra and impala, and eventually lions not too long ago, just to kind of complete the, the ecosystem. And thank goodness that was done. So pretty much I've fallen in love with this place. <laughs> I don't know how Marikele feels about me, but um, we'll see. I said yesterday there was a spark. I think um, our connection developed further today. But for now, let me sort out this fire. Tonight we're browning steak, perfectly ripe avo, and some veggies, just to finish it off. Cheers. Good morning. It's windy, overcast, game plan, explore some new roads, explore some new areas, see what happens. Let's check this bird art out. It's all right. been all about rhinos this afternoon which I am not complaining about um, time any time spent with with rhinos is time well spent in my books many reserves in South Africa are going down the route of dehorning the rhinos and the reason for that is to deter poachers and I'm not too sure what the evidence looks like but apparently it seems to be helping a lot and I just read yesterday that for the first time in many years, the black and white rhino population has slightly increased, which is fantastic news. I mean, it's a small percentage that it's increased by. Um, it's a small victory, but it's a victory that's been, it's been a long time coming and there's, there's plenty more work to do, but, ooh, snake track. Yeah, it's just something very promising. I wonder what snake this was. Alright, let me give you a, a little bit of a tour here of Clopey Camp. Firstly, how beautiful is that view? We have a dining kitchen area with pretty much everything you need. Let me come through here into the room. I was told it's two beds, but this one's got three single beds. This one's purely for equipment. A fan which is very much needed on a hot day. I can't turn the lights on at the moment because I think there's load shedding. So yeah, how incredible is that? And I think I am the only one staying in this camp tonight. So if that's the case, then how cool is that? I know it's quite, quite overkill. My first reaction was, wow, am I really staying here? Just me. But I soon got over that. I'm, I'm enjoying it, absolutely loving it. And next week I'm gonna be camping, so I'm gonna enjoy it while it lasts. It is so windy. To be honest, the whole day has been fairly quiet in terms of sightings. But I feel like you come to a place like this, not for the sightings, but more just to get away from your everyday busy life. 
it's got a very grounding feeling to it um, like I've said before it forces you to connect in a different way the sun's starting to set on those mountains there and I mean sitting here lighting a fire and having a drink with the birds calling in the background I mean you can't ask for much more no luck with the lions but that's okay I feel like I feel like to see cats here you need to get very lucky um, even with the lions and that's all right because next week I'm off to Malelan Kruger National Park if you want to see that episode where we'll most likely bump into some predators then be sure to hit the subscribe button the only thing I would say is maybe a slight negative is that I wish there were more roads to drive on in the Big Five area there's a massive wilderness section up that way behind me I get why there's a wilderness section and it's totally fine but maybe just one one long road like looping around there or something just an extra an extra option when it comes to routes I came in here thinking it might be similar to a place like Pilansburg quickly found out that Marikele really does have its own unique personality it's clear from the get-go I don't see it as like a brother or a sister to another park it's totally its own thing it deserves to be spoken about more often and I think it deserves more visitors and I mean look at that come on three hours from Johannesburg and you get this tomorrow morning I'll do a little bit of a loop through the big five area on my way out to see what we can see uh, you never know you never know That sounds like a pride of lions scrapping over food. Cheers, Clopey. You've treated me super well. I've heard those lions and they are close to camp. Maybe fighting over a meal or something that they've just brought down. Because if they're quite vocal, then that's going to be the main factor in finding them. I think I've driven past them now actually because they were just so close to camp. Did I tell you I love the mornings? Oh, these are fresh fresh. Man. You know what, regardless of whether we find these lions or not, this is just the best way to start a morning. To hear lions and then go searching for them and you see their tracks, you see exactly what happened but you just can't see them, it's just like, oh, it's thrilling. It's just thrilling. This is when I feel the most alive because you have to become so present. Your senses are hyper focused. You are just totally in the now, you know. Your mind starts working like the animal that you're trying to track down. So you start looking at things from a different perspective, which is never a bad thing. just the end of a lion calling it just has a last few grunts right at the end it's time to move on I've enjoyed the challenge but I'm not gonna see those lions they down there feeding on something so close yet so far it's not all about having that end result that you hoped for it's about being in a state of almost there at all times that point where you feel excited alive and in the now with something to always look forward to. Marikele just crystallized that for me. And besides, to be able to spend time alone with these gentle giants is one of the greatest privileges of all at the moment. Thank you Marikele.